from coast to coast, in every state in the Union, the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers of America present Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life. Wherever you go, from one end of this nation to the other, you'll find the folks at a DeSoto Plymouth dealers ready and eager to serve you. And this week, there's big news at your DeSoto Plymouth dealers. The new, the 1952 DeSoto is now on display. More about this great new DeSoto later in the program. And here he is, the one, the only... <laughs> Never heard of him. Oh, that's me. <laughs> Well, here I am again with a thousand dollars for one of our couples. Is this one of our couples? <laughs> and if any of them say the secret word, the duck will come down and pay him a hundred dollars. The word tonight is uh, tree. Uh, uh, Mr. Fenneman, who's first to try for the thousand dollars? Well, we invited some architects to the program tonight. And just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected Mr. Walter Hagedome. His partner is a young woman from our audience, Miss Sheila Crystal. And here they are. Folks, meet Groucho Marx. Come right in. <coughs> now, welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Say the secret word and you'll divide $100. It's a common word, something you see every day. Miss uh, Sheila Crystal. Huh? Mm -hmm. Mr. Walter Hagedorn? Hagedorn. Hag Hagedorn. You're an architect? Yes, I'm an architect. Where are you from? Mason City? No, I'm from uh, Petaluma, California. Where? Petaluma, California, the world's egg basket. Oh. <laughs> have been born there. I've laid many of them. <laughs> Miss uh, Sheila Crystal? That's right. Mm -hmm. so, may, may I ask your age? 25. 25. What part of Ireland are you from, Sheila? It's my mother who was born in Ireland. I'd narrowly miss being born in New Haven, Connecticut, but I was born in London instead. In London, Connecticut? No, London, New London England. England. Oh, London, England. Uh -huh. huh? Would you say that Sheila, as an architect now speaking, would you say that she's early American, modern, or rambling? <laughs> Well, I, I'd say she was modern with uh, maybe some early American influence. Is that uh, true, Sheila? It'll do. <laughs> well, now, why would I need an architect? You just can't... Uh, why can't I just go to a builder and tell him to build me a house? Well, well Hagedorn? you could... Uh, I'd love to say that name. Hagedorn, Hagedorn, Hagedorn. <laughs> Uh, you could go to a builder, but if you want a real home to suit your needs, you should go to an architect, because behind every real home, there's an architect. <laughs> Times have certainly changed since I was a lad. <laughs> and what you'd find behind every home. <laughs> you'd find a chicken coop, that's what you'd find. I fooled you, didn't I? <laughs> you ought to be ashamed of yourself, all of you. <laughs> now, uh, well, Sheila, every girl has plans for a dream house. Uh, would you give us some idea of, of what you'd like? Well, I think in an early American salt box type of house. I, <laughs> I lived salt in one box? in New Jersey, and... Uh, you live in a salt box? <laughs> it's a salt box type of house. Oh. It's early American. Mm -hmm. It, it, um... I lived... It, of course, it would have to have plenty of space behind it for camels. I have a pair of Rhodesian Ridgebacks. Is that so? <laughs> well, if you keep your mouth shut, nobody will notice. <laughs> What is a Rhodesian Ridgeback? Uh, it's a lion dog. A what? A lion dog. Well, I'm a lion dog myself. <laughs> what do you mean, lion dogs? You mean they're always lying under the stove? No, they, they, uh, they hunt lions. They um, hunt lions in, in New Jersey? No, in South Africa. Oh. You um, live in New Jersey and you send them over to South Africa? No, you've got me completely wrong. I live in California. <laughs> You just told me you lived in a salt box in, in New Jersey. <laughs> you were born in Connecticut and you hunt in Africa. <laughs> Kid, you're saying you get around. 
gets confusing, doesn't it? Oh, it's devastating. <laughs> Would you mind amplifying this a little more? About the dog? About anything, I don't care. <laughs> My standards are low, I don't care what we discuss. <laughs> Well, Tell us about the lion dogs. Well, they hunt in packs, there are about half a dozen of them, and they have, they're noted for their ability to scent a lion about an, a mile away. And uh, they bay him out of hiding, and they, they uh, hold him for the huntsman's coup de grace. Oh. <laughs> well, a huntsman without a coup de grace is nothing, huh? <laughs> Do these dogs ever get into trouble? They have no lions to chase around here. Do they keep in practice by chasing the milkman or well, ice man? So far, they've been quite well behaved over here that I can remember an instance in South Africa where Chaka rather was Who? beyond the pale. Chaka, that's the Chaka? name of the dog, yes. He was beyond the pale? What do you mean? He was thirsty and they... <laughs> No, but, but um, he kept two honeymooners out of the hotel by um, barking when they tried to open the door, and they had to stay out till about three o'clock in the morning when I came to rescue them. <laughs> Very funny. <laughs> that chakra is really a dirty dog. <laughs> Well, this has been most interesting, and if I ever want to build a dog house, I'll consult both of you. <laughs> <laughs> now, in just one minute, you're going to play your bet your life for a chance at the $1,000 question. Right now, I want you to hear something of real importance. Across the nation this week, folks everywhere are getting their first ride in the beautiful new 1952 DeSoto. Look at those big, wide doors and see how roomy this 1952 DeSoto is. Inside, you sit naturally. You relax in seats that are chair high. Yes, the 1952 DeSoto brings you a whole host of wonderful features. Features like all flow shock absorbers to help give you one of the smoothest rides you've ever known. Waterproof ignition to give you sure starts even in the dampest weather. To protect your family in case of blowouts. Famous safety rim wheels. The new the 1952 DeSoto. It's designed for you and your budget, too. See the new 1952 DeSoto. Now on display at your DeSoto Plymouth dealers. All right, you bet as much of your $20 as you want on each of four questions, and the couple that earns the most money gets a chance at the $1,000 DeSoto Plymouth question later in the show. Is that uh, clear, Mr. Hagedorn? Hagedorn, Hagedorn. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected nursery rhymes. Here's your first question. How much are you going to bet? Let's say 18. 15, I think we'll be conservative. Let's make it 15. Oh, no, let's make it 18. Oh, I think we'll make it 15. 15? 15. 15. 15. This is a woman's world we're living in, Mr. Hagedorn. So I'll find out. Getting $15. Where did Peter keep his, his wife? In a pumpkin. Um, in a pumpkin. In a pumpkin shell is right. <laughs> Well, you're off to a good start. You have $35. Remember, you're going for $1,000 tonight. How much of the $35 would you bet on your second question? How about 30? Uh, well, let's make it 30. Hmm? Well, I got how old was the uh, How old was the peas porridge in the pot? You know, nine days old. Nine days old is right. <laughs> you're climbing. You have $65. I think Hagedorn has been building kitty coops. <laughs> <laughs> Here's your third question. How much will you bet? 62. 62. Who kissed the girls and made them cry? So. Georgie Porgy. Georgie Porgy is right. <laughs> you now have $127. All right, and here's your last chance to be the other couples. How much will you bet? Um, let's make it 100. Uh -huh. Let's come up with something. <laughs> All, right. Here, All right, here we go for $100. Who runs through the town in his nightshade, wrapping at windows? Wee Willie Winky. Wee Willie Winky is right. <laughs> And you wind up with a grand total of $227. Thank you very much. Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealer. We have a tailor and a housewife now, Groucho, and here they are, Mr. Richard R. McIntosh and Mrs. Catherine George. Meet Groucho Marx. 
Thank you. Welcome to your bet your life. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you see every day. Mrs. Catherine George, um, you're the housewife. Where are you from, Mrs. George? I'm from Macedonia, Greece. You're from Greece? Mm-hmm. Oh. George doesn't sound like a Greek name. Are, are you married to gorgeous George? Oh, no. It's Georgeopolis. His name is Georgeopolis, but I just dropped the Opolis. <laughs> did the same thing. She was really Minneapolis. <laughs> and I had an Indian uncle named Indianopolis. Huh? <laughs> Nothing. What sort of work does your husband do? <laughs> a restaurant man. But of course, oh. he's retired now. He's retired? Mm -hmm. Mm hmm You have any children? Oh, yes. Five children and seven grandchildren. How did, how did you meet your husband? Uh, well, my husband was a uh, captain. I'll call you Sheila, Sheila huh? Uh, my husband was the captain of the Greek army. I come from a very small town in Macedonia. So he passed by there. He was the captain of the transportation corps. And uh, he stopped there for one night. And he says, the first minute he set eyes on me, he fell in love with me. Well, that's understandable. I can understand so, that. So he proposed to me. The next day, he came back and he says, I want to marry you. Would you marry me? I said, so that soon? I just met you. Well, he says, I'm an army man. I gotta do things in a hurry. <laughs> so, um, I said, well, can you give me a few minutes to think about it? <laughs> and uh, he says, well, you can think all you want. He didn't even me think, you know. He just kept talking about the adventures we were going to have in the war. He was gonna take me to war, mind you. <laughs> and uh, I was only 16 then. So he says, well, you gotta come with me. I'll show you the world around. I said, all right. So the first day we were uh, met, the second day we were engaged, and the third day we were married. And the fourth day, he took me to war. <laughs> <laughs> and you know how, Mr. Mark? He put me in a trunk. Believe it or not. He just put me in a trunk. And uh, he put the trunk in a big truck, you know. And up I went in the boat. You know how they lifted with the winch? Yes. There I went. There was a winch in the winch, huh? <laughs> and the winch. Well, the winch in the winch. I don't know which. For two weeks. For two weeks. You were I... in the trunk? No. The first day I was in the trunk. It's a fine honeymoon alone in the trunk. <laughs> I know that's right. The second day, he uh, put me in an ambulance car, and I laid there like an invalid for two weeks while I was traveling the Black Sea to go to Russia. You didn't know you were going to go through all this when he proposed to you, huh? Well, uh, no. He didn't tell me that I was going to go in the trunk because if I had to do that again, I wouldn't do it now. <laughs> no or no love? Greek officer or not Greek officer? You're absolutely right. <laughs> uh, Mr. Richard uh, McIntosh, that's a Scotch name, isn't it? That's right. You're a, you're a Schneider? A, a tailor? That's right. That's kind of a curious business for a Scot, isn't it? Well, I don't think so. There are a great many Scotch tailors. Is that so? They cut the cloth real short, I suppose. Huh? <laughs> are, are you married? Oh, yes. Oh, you've been to the cleaners already, huh? <laughs> Where do you work, Mac? Well, I work several places. Uh, we have a store in Seattle, one at San Francisco, and our main store here in Hollywood. Now, suppose I find myself in your shop for a suit of clothes. Now, what happens first? Well, the salesman greets you. No, I've already been greeted by your salesman. He just pulled me in off the sidewalk. <laughs> well, first I wanted a belt in the back. <laughs> now, suppose you don't happen to have the style suit I'm interested in. That's impossible because we have all style suits. Good, good. It happens I'm interested in a diving suit. <laughs> Plus, I go, to, I go to many dives later in the evening. <laughs> well, tell me, Mr. McIntosh, when a customer orders a suit, how can you be sure he's going to take it after it's made? Well, we require a deposit. How much? Well, we insist that they leave at least a half down. They leave half down? That's right. <laughs> you mean they walk off without their trousers? <laughs> 
How about famous actors? Would you require them to leave half down? No, they've got to pay the whole thing in advance. Huh? <laughs> He not only knows clothes, he knows actors. <laughs> well, you're an interesting couple, and my advice is if you want the very best in values, visit your DeSoto Plymouth dealer. <laughs> All right. There we go. Now, let's see how high you can. You're now you're going to play your bet your life for a chance. $1,000 question. You run your $20 and no more than our other couples. I can't tell you how much you have to win, but George Opolis, uh, George Opolis, uh, Fenneman, is going to remind our listeners. The architect and the lady with the dogs won two hundred twenty-seven dollars. George Opolis. Somebody else. I just named you. Oh, there. I thought I was the only one. Oh no. <laughs> this town is loaded with George Opolis. <laughs> Did you meet Mrs. George? How do you do? This is George Opolis, Panama. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see how high can build you twenty dollars. You selected names taken from occupations. Now, how much are you going to bet? You have twenty dollars. Um, well, let's start easy. Uh, how about ten dollars? All right. Ten dollars. Ten dollars. Ten dollars. What do you call a man who cooks breads and cakes? Uh, the question going to a baker. A baker is right. You now have thirty dollars. Remember, you're going for a thousand dollars tonight. How much is the thirty dollars? Will you bet on your second question? Well, what if that's wager the twenty and save save the ten? How about that? Good. All right. All right. I always listen to a man. I always take his advice. Good. So it's all right. Twenty. Twenty. Twenty dollars. A man who makes casks or barrels is called what? Casks. What did you say, Bill? The barrels or casks? Wine casks? Oh, I thought uh, you meant caskets. Oh, what, a, <laughs> what a question, Cass. Oh, dear. Well, casket maker. I'm sorry, yeah. your time is up, kids. Uh, the answer is uh, Cooper. Should have known that. That's right. All right, now here's your third question. Drop down to $10. You have $10. How much of the 10 are you going to bet? $8. $8. What do you call a man who makes beer? A brewer. A brewer, a brewer, a brewer. is right. Yeah. <laughs> well, now you have $18. Now you're climbing again. Is your last chance to be the other couple. How much of the 18 will you bet? Well, let's bet 16. How about 16? So we still have... 16, so we'll have two left. Two if we... When, well, we have more. We're not going to lose. <laughs> All right. 16 is it. All right. What do you call a builder of wooden structures? Carpenter. 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 A carpenter, a carpenter is right, huh? <laughs> And you wind up with $34. Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. We have a young couple about to be married, Groucho. They were chosen from our studio audience from among several engaged couples here tonight. Uh, Miss Jackie Lervold, Mr. Peter Hamburger, come in here and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, youngsters, for the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Say the secret word and win $100. It's a common word, something you see every day. Um, let's see now. Jackie uh, Levold, is that right? Levold, yes. Levold. Uh, how, how old are you, Jackie? 18. 18, huh? You're pretty young to be 18, aren't you? <laughs> and uh, Peter Hamburger, uh, what is your age? I'm 21. 21. Well, that's mm -hmm. the oldest hamburger I've ever seen. <laughs> Although I've been to many drive-ins where they were around 19. <laughs> where are you from, Pete? I'm from Amsterdam, Holland. Oh, you're from Holland? Mm -hmm, yes. Oh, I didn't know they had hamburgers in Holland. <laughs> and uh, uh, Jackie, what is your hometown? Everett, Washington. It's just north of Seattle. Oh, uh, are you married? No, not yet, but I plan to be. You, you're going to be? Well, congratulations. Where'd you say you're from? Everett, Washington. Everett. Uh, are you married, Pete? Uh, no. <laughs> uh, why not? A young, good-looking young fellow like you? Well, I plan to be married very soon. Is that so? Well, you two have a lot in common already. <laughs> you two know each other? Pete, I want you to meet Jackie. Well, they're both interested in matrimony. Who knows? Perhaps I can get them together. Huh? <laughs> 
I know you haven't had uh, much time to form a definite opinion, Jackie, but uh, what do you think of this young man? He is my fiance. I'm going to marry him. Oh, really? Well, this is the shortest romance I've ever heard of. <laughs> so, in that case, you have my permission to get married. <laughs> Congratulations to both of you. Have you got a job, Pete? Yes. Why, what do you do? I'm assistant manager at the Lowe's State Theatre downtown. Assistant manager at Lowe's State Theatre? And Jackie, uh, are you working? Yes, I'm an usher at Lowe's State Theatre. <laughs> oh, well, how did you two get together? <laughs> Incidentally, do they send you guys to a special school to learn how to send six people in a row where there's only four seats? <laughs> do you pick this up yourself? <laughs> a good usherette wouldn't do that. I guess not. A good usherette would let them find their own seats. <laughs> Who's your favorite actor, uh, Jackie? Uh, Humphrey Bogart. Humphrey Bogart, eh? Yes. How about you, Pete? My favorite actor? Mm. Gary Grand. Who? Gary Grand. <laughs> you mean Carrie Cooper, don't you? <laughs> Gary Grand. I can't even say it myself. <laughs> Jackie, is Pete uh, jealous, for example? Would he mind if, if I kiss you? Just a little peck, you know. Sort of a Gregory peck. <laughs> I don't know you'd ask him. Pete, can I kiss your girlfriend? I'd rather you wouldn't. What about a, just a small kiss, I mean, for a buck? Five bucks? No. <laughs> Ten bucks? Ten dollars, Pete? Is that the uh, highest you go? <laughs> That's as high as I'll go and that's as low as I'll go. Is that enough? No, that's no, that's not enough. No, no. No. This one was a real European, huh? <laughs> well, you're a charming couple and I know you'll have a long and happy life together in the lobby of Low State. Just watch out for people like me, that's all. Now you're going to play your bet your life. Beat our other couples, you'll get a chance at the $1,000 question. I can't tell you how much you have to win, but George is Georgeopolis is going to remind our listeners. The architect and the lady with the dogs are leading with $227. Here we go, let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected Latin songs as your category. Here's your first question, how much will you bet? Talk it up, kids. Ten. 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 All right, let's see if you can give me the name of this Latin song. Okay, Jerry. What's the answer? Uh, I couldn't think of uh, it. You should have known this. It's the peanut vendor. You sell them in the lobby, oh. don't you? You have $10. Five. Five. Five dollars. Give me the title of this song. Play, Jerry. I'm sorry, it's Perfidia. It was not my All right, well, that's a shame. You have yeah, five dollars now. Five dollars. This won't do. You can't get married on five dollars. <laughs> Here's your third question. Now, how much are you going to bet of the five? Two fifty. Okay. Two fifty. Two fifty. All right. What is the name of this Latin song? $7.50. Well, how much are you going to bet? All of it, okay. All right, shoot the works. What's the name of this song? Brazil. Brazil. Brazil is right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. 
and that was very good. Now they were, how much did they get? They wound up with $15, and that means that the architect and the lady with the dogs with $227 in just one minute get the chance at the DeSoto Plymouth $1,000 question. <laughs> Every day, in every state in the Union, thousands upon thousands of motorists take their cars for service where they see the famous sign of better service, the friendly sign of a DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Skilled mechanics who know your car like a book locate and repair trouble quickly. They're aided, of course, by the most modern tools and equipment, equipment that assures you of a faster job, a better job, a job that saves you money. These DeSoto Plymouth mechanics have been trained in factory methods. This training, plus their years of actual on-the-job experience, assures you of trouble-free driving for miles and miles and miles. So for a fair and square deal every time, look for the familiar sign of a DeSoto Plymouth dealer and be sure of a top service job at a price that's fair. Every day, everywhere, thousands upon thousands of motorists take their cars for service to DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Here's the architect and the lady with the dogs all set for the DeSoto Plymouth $1,000 question, Groucho. <laughs> now, uh, you can buy a couple of extra lion dogs, you know, if you win this. <laughs> Here we go for $1,000. I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on a single answer. Uh, on a single answer between you, think carefully, and please note up in the audience. Here it is. Ready? Yes. Got your thinking caps on? Mm -hmm. Children of all ages have known and loved the stories of King Arthur. Let's see how good your memory is. For $1,000, tell me, what was the name of the legendary city where King Arthur held his court? the answer you two have decided upon. If you don't know, take a stand. Oh, well, I'm the, sorry, no, no. The, uh... Well, uh, <laughs> it, it's Camelot. C-A-M-E-L-O-T. <laughs> oh. Well, I could think that was more Arthur. <laughs> well, uh, that's a tough question. So that means the big question next week will be worth $1,500. Well, you lost the big money, but they won how much? $227 in the quiz. $227 is not too bad for an evening's work. Congratulations and thanks to both of you and to all of our contestants on the show Thank tonight. You. Remember that the dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth. Two great cars, both products of the Chrysler Corporation. Friends, go in and see a DeSoto Plymouth dealer tomorrow. And when you do, tell them Groucho sent you. Be sure to tune in next week, same time, same station, for the Groucho Mark Show, You Bet Your Life. Brought to you by the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers of America. And remember, the DeSoto Plymouth dealers also bring you Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life on radio every Wednesday night.